As our population booms and Central Texas communities grow, some local law enforcement agencies have had trouble keeping up. While they deal with staffing shortages, police tell me these license plate readers are force multipliers and help solve crime. But some fear it just multiplies the ways you can be tracked. This year, many cities in Central Texas. All those in favor say aye. 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 All in favor? Motion passes 4-0. Have voted to put automatic license plate readers high in the sky to cut down on crime. These possible threats are not to be taken lightly. Privacy is a universal human right. But it's it hasn't been church. without pushback. In fact, we had concerns here about sort of big brother um, watching people as they come and go. But you got to remember, law enforcement is... We're, we deal in information. Lynn Carter is the police chief in small town Sunset Valley. We have between seven and 800 residents here. After an uptick in retail theft at this local shopping center. We found out about the flock cameras. The department installed 10 LPR cameras at city entrances and high traffic retail areas. And just, just to put this in perspective, we have 13 officers. Our city is just a mile. Since installing the cameras in February, we've recovered nearly 50 stolen cars. Vehicles, he says, are often involved in other crimes as well. Most of the time they're from the Austin area, San Antonio or Houston area. It's helped us to solve crimes that we wouldn't have been able to put the energy into, like road rage incidents and assaults. While several companies make LPRs, most law enforcement in our area use products from a company called Flock Safety. According to Flock Safety, as of mid-November, at least 12 agencies and cities in our 12-county viewing area are customers. There's no requirement to inform the public about the use of these cameras, so some agencies have disclosed usage themselves. HOAs and businesses can use the same private company. So here's how it works. Vehicles reported stolen, involved in a missing person case, or certain felony offenses can all be added to a database shared among agencies using Flock. Those cameras can be mounted on law enforcement vehicles or on top of a pole like this, snapping a time-stamped photo of every vehicle passing by, capturing details like model and color and even bumper stickers. If it captures a wanted vehicle, law enforcement gets pinged. The image of the vehicle comes up in their car as well as the location of the car. Police can also search the database, but only for active investigations. So I'm, it won't let me search it without putting the reason and you know why I'm searching for it. We watched as Carter looked up black trucks that came through Sunset Valley. Between 10.30 and 12.30. And all of these potential hits popped up. In some photos, you can clearly see the front and back windows of the vehicles. But Flock Safety says their LPRs don't have facial recognition, which is why it's not considered personally identifiable information. In Pflugerville, police say since turning on the cameras in August, they have used the data to make 20 arrests and recover 21 stolen vehicles. In Round Rock, police say since installing the cameras in April, they have used the data in at least 354 calls for service. Also sharing flock data with police, HOAs. Right now, at least 40 HOAs in the KVU area are using flock LPR cameras. 36 of them are in Travis County. Garlic Creek HOA is like proactive. We're not reactive, we're proactive. We're trying to stay ahead of the game. Jeffrey Morales is the president of the Garlic you know, Creek of HOA in Buda. We just got tired of, like I said, the, the vandalism at our amenity center, the trespassing and stuff. So in July, the three member HOA board voted to install three cameras at neighborhood access points, which he says has helped cut down on car break ins and other possible threats. The board does have access, but we don't ever log in to use it for anything. Morales says their data is saved for 90 days. And unlike law enforcement, he says he can only see photos of vehicles coming and going from their neighborhood. We just see the basic. We don't see what the law enforcement see. People who live there can opt out of having their data stored, but to do so, you have to give the company your license plate information. You can learn a lot of very, very sensitive stuff about people when this stuff is all connected. Kevin Welch is the president of EFF Austin, a group pushing to protect digital privacy. He feels LPRs violate the Fourth Amendment. The issue is there is no way to track uh, cars that are flagged as having committed a crime with this technology without 
tracking everyone, whether they've been convicted of a crime or not. Welch also worries about data breaches and the fact that a private company is storing this widely shared information. And recently, the ACLU released a report calling for stricter usage in data storage laws. Texas law is the Wild West in terms of this stuff. So you just don't know where your movements are who has access to that and who's sharing it. Attorney Justin Roberts says the technology is being implemented faster than the law can keep up. There are only a few isolated state law provisions that prohibit their use. Uh, and so municipalities can basically use them as they want to, except for things like red light cameras and speed enforcement cameras. Groups concerned about privacy and storage are calling for the readers to be used by law enforcement only, to not store data of the innocent, no sharing data among agencies, a database to search who has their information, and requiring entities to report if they have the cameras. There are definitely, there are 16 other states that have put in place pretty strict restrictions on license plate readers. Like in New Hampshire, state law limits data storage to only three minutes, a this rule Welch wanted Austin right. City Council and to adopt when reinstating the Austin Police Department's cameras in September through a one-year pilot program. If you have a, a homicide that occurs, you're not going to be able to go back in the first three minutes to figure out what you need to figure out. Jeff you Greenwalt is the assistant police chief in Austin. He says like most technology, these cameras are not perfect and sometimes misread license plates. That does happen um, and that's why we have to visually confirm it. And again, here's the human factor. The officer has to make sure that that plate matches that car. That's one of many rules that's city councils have implemented. This kept getting debated over several months. The Austin City Council approved spending up to $114,000 to reinstate the cameras. This passes eight to three. APD used the cameras for Motorola from 2016 to 2020. There were zero instances found where anybody was using the system inappropriately. This time around, they're considering using Flock. We know that we've been a little bit negatively impacted since it was taken away. APD has seen critical staffing shortages in recent years, and leaders say this technology can fill gaps. LPRs are a force multiplier. We're able to do more with less. Austin's LPR program ended in 2020 as part of the city's efforts to reimagine policing. At the time, cadet classes were put on hold to revamp training after an audit found racial profiling and other disparities within the department. This year, Austin City Council laid down stricter usage rules on the cameras. Instead of APD holding data for a year, they can store it for 30 days. APD will only share data upon request. The cameras are subject to quarterly audits by a chief security officer and an external party, and officers would get annual training on usage. If somebody's looking at license plates without a criminal nexus, um, that is a, a crime and it's against policy. Greenwald so says the department the will not use the cameras for parking tickets, warrant roundups, or Class C misdemeanors. And when it comes to immigration, the data won't be used for civil cases. We only release it for criminal investigations. So if ICE were to ask for LPR data, if they have a criminal investigation for any reason, then we would help them out. What we think are real concerns is, is you know, prosecution related to reproductive health care, uh, prosecution related to immigration status and ICE enforcement. Round Rock and Pflugerville have online transparency portals showing things like who has access, searches and hits. Roberts says this doesn't mean every municipality will be as transparent, so state laws are needed. You can see how this becomes a surveillance society with facial readers, biometric readers, things like that. In 2019, bills for LPR regulations came up, but didn't make it far. The next Texas legislative session starts in January. So uh, hopefully this will ha have enough wind to carry us into the next session and someone will file a bill to deal with it. So while LPR cameras are widely unregulated in the Lone Star State, this year the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles created a grant specifically to fund LPRs for law enforcement. These 40 jurisdictions have received $800,000 total. We have more details on our website, kview.com. For the KVU Defenders, I'm Derenisha Heron.